Hi and welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. My name's Matt. Today we're going to take a look at an Australian submachine gun. Not the Owen, not the Austen, but the F1. The F1 was adopted in 1962 to replace the Owen. The Owen had been made during World War II. By the late 1950s, the Owen gun had seen hard service throughout World War II, Malaya and Korea. And the Australian Army was looking at a new replacement. The British had adopted the Sterling submachine gun in 1953. Australia examined the Sterling and liked some of the features. While the Sterling and the F1 were designed for the same purpose, the designs have very few commonalities. While the tube receiver is similar and the perforated barrel jacket is similar, the design of the bolt and the trigger mechanism differ greatly. The F1 maintains the Owen gun's top mounted magazine. The F1 uses the Sterling's standard 34 round double stack double feed magazine. In a moment we'll take a closer look at the magazine housing and the sight system. The F1 has a folding rear sight and a foresight, not located at the muzzle but on the side of the magazine housing. Here on the right side of the receiver we can see the fore and rear sights. In the late 1950s, a series of designs designated the X series were developed. The first two prototypes morphed into the X3, which in 1962 was adopted as the F1. The F1 retains a number of similarities with the Owen, specifically the magazine housing position. However, it also shares some similarities with the SLR, the L1A1. These include the pistol grip profile and shape, and the fire controls. In the 1960s, the Australian government approached Sterling Armaments about producing their Sterling magazines under license. However, Sterling quoted an exorbitant price that the Australian government was not willing to pay. And as a result, the Australians went ahead and made their own version, copying the design verbatim. When we compare the F1 and the L2A3, Sterling, we notice that they both share some similarities, namely the perforated barrel jacket. However, the F1 uses a fixed stock with an inline profile, whereas the Sterling uses a folding stock. Okay, let's take a closer look at the F1. On the left side, we can see the F1's charging handle and dust cover, as well as the magazine release, and the two position fire selector. As we move to the rear, we can also see the butt disassembly catch. On the right hand side of the F1, we can see a bayonet lug to fit an L1A2 sword bayonet. As we move to the rear of the weapon, we can see a hand stop welded beneath the receiver just in front of the ejection port. On the magazine housing, we can see the F1's blade front sight, and a little further back, the folding rear peep sight. In this close-up, we can see the non-reciprocating charging handle and dust cover, magazine release, and the fire control group. The fire selector has two positions, up for safe and down for fire. However, single shots were achieved by pulling the trigger to the halfway point. This allowed the sear to engage for semi-automatic fire. Note also the pair of pins with the markings lock and free. These were to allow the trigger group pistol grip assembly to be removed during disassembly. Let's finish up with a pass along the top of the F1. Note the bayonet boss and lug on the right, and the position of the offset sights. The F1 was used throughout the Vietnam War and was issued to helicopter crews, logistical troops, and those manning vehicles and armoured vehicles. The F1 was lighter than the own gun that it replaced, weighing 7 pounds, and was 28 inches long. It used a standard blowback action and it had a cyclical rate of 600 rounds per minute. Between 1962 and 1973, the Lithgow Small Arms Factory produced 25,000 F1 submachine guns. These remained in service until the 1990s, when both the F1 and the Australian SLR were replaced by the Australian version of the Steyr Orc, the F1. So now we'll take a look at the two compared. Sadly, in our rush to disassemble the F1 and L2A3, Vic and I forgot to check that, that our radio mics were still on. But at least we can still take a look at the F1's internals. 
In addition to the position of the magazine, the F1 also uses a bolt derived from the Owen gun. Here we can see the F1 and Sterling's bolts side by side. Note how the F1's bolt is much longer. This added mass, coupled with the stronger recoil spring, brings the F1's rate of fire down to around 600 rounds per minute from the Owen's 700. We can also see that the two bolts share similar feedways for picking up rounds from both columns of the double stack Sterling magazine. As the F1 uses a derivative of the Owens bolt, the F1 does not have the Sterling's helical dirt clearing grooves cut into the body of the bolt. Another difference between the two is that the Sterling has a dual recoil spring assembly, while the F1 has a single spring. As we can see here, the F1's recoil spring sits over a guide in the butt assembly. The butt assembly is made up of a steel guide an adapter and a sleeve which fits inside the wooden butt stock. Thank you for watching another episode of the Armourer's Bench. If you enjoyed the content please like and subscribe. Thank you.